When the sun shines, there's nowhere better than the northwest of Scotland. These inaugural championships attracted royal support, opened by Princess Anne. Enough of the formalities, now down to the racing. This event has been a long time in the planning. The organisers try to ensure that as far as possible, nothing could go wrong. In the event, they were delighted by the result. Uh, it's fantastic. A lot of people have put in a lot of effort, especially the local people up in Ullapool. It's just fantastic. Um, that's the biggest uh, start we've ever seen, just going off there. 14 boats all racing off together, really close racing. People all over the beach uh, looking down at it. It's just fantastic. You could think that Ullapool was designed for this. <laughs> There's the beach and the sea right, you know, this lovely bit of uh, sea to row in that's sheltered and all the shops and the lovely houses and the campsite just next door and the pubs yeah it's been great there were teams from all over the world the furthest traveled had come all the way from tasmania so why did they want to come we ended up with a few different ladies who um some started and then pulled out they had other commitments but then our crew of four plus tim who's been our coach since we started um, continued, so that was great. But yes, it was self-funded. Um, we had a, quite a bit of support from the Living Boat Trust, who were in Franklin, and they are very community orientated. That was where we actually built the St Isles Skiff, and we got free t-shirts from them. <laughs> like the Australians, the team from Oregon was made up of women. They too had taken on the challenge of building their own boat. They too were racing in open water for the first time. Well, the began with the Wind and Oar Boat School starting out as a non-profit organization that built boats with um, youth and adults. And the first big boat build was with women building a St. Isle skiff. And it was a class, and we've become sort of a club, ad hoc club in a sense, but um, so we call ourselves the Wind and Oar Rosies. And so we built the boat in 2011 over the summer and launched in September 2011. We had heard through the Wooden Boat magazine, which is in the United States, that they challenged high schools in the high, on, the, on the east coast of the United States to build a series of St. Isle skiffs. And we thought that would be a great thing to do in Portland area too with youth. And so we were trying the boat out and we tried it with a group of women. We have a mm. Scottish boat builder in the town called mm. Peter Laidlaw and um, he built 30 boats and we went to him and asked him to be our supervisor. And he said, um, Yes, fine, I think I'll do a bit of research. And he came up with the Ness Yawl first, but then he said, no, I've been reading about the Sonar Skiff and it's wonderful for communities. And, um, and it's been a real community um, building project because all the towns have got together, whereas before they actually did things by themselves. So it's been the good side to it. Hmm. A team from the Netherlands had towed their boat all the way from their small town in Holland up to Wallapool. We wanted a boat for our children to row, and we've got a big sloop for six rowers, and the children can't really row that. So we wanted a, a sloop to, um, for children to be able to, uh, to enjoy it as well. And uh, yeah, we had a look at different designs, and then uh, the Chandel Skiff uh, came round when we uh, came to uh, one of uh, yeah, the sort of boat builders um, uh, that imports these uh, skiffs. And uh, that was shown to us, so yeah, it was quite easy to uh, go for this one because it's also uh, uh, easy to uh, home build as well. Uh, that was one of the reasons to do it. By far the most unusual of the skiffs was this one called the Sapphira, built by a team from the college in Pennsylvania. We call it the musical art, and uh, what I'm hoping to do is get enough scientists and computers out on the water and see what kind of reaction we get from uh, mammals, ocean-going mammals, and hopefully we'll be able to learn how to interact with them in an auditory way. That's my goal. Uh, but I use the St. Isle skiff for the rowing part of it too because uh, it's our, the school where I teach, Moravian Academy, has a real strong emphasis on music, academics, art, uh, 
the whole deal. So it was a perfect environment for it. I called the St. Isles people to see if we could change it. And as long as you're above the water line, it's okay. So the one thing that a disadvantage for us in racing is very heavy. Oh, it's wonderful, yes. I mean, some sometimes modifications can look a bit uh, peculiar and can get possibly uh, excused to some extent by that's the way he wants it and if, if he likes it, that's okay. But this is something totally unique and uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, I'm not, you know, not going to criticise it at all. <laughs> There's nothing like whatever any, any of us had in mind at all. But it's a beautiful thing in its own right. So, at the end of the day, did the organisers feel that everything had been worthwhile? Oh, yes. Um, the, f <laughs> the weather's been fantastic. Last week was pretty poor weather and it would have been quite hard work running this. We would have done it uh, and everyone would have muscled in. You know, everyone would have been fine. But the weather has been just so great. It's, it's, I am so happy and thankful. It's absolutely astonishing to see how it's taken off and the way that the, the whole community in Alapool has got behind it. A tremendous amount of work has been done by loads of people. The World Championships, um, the, the uh, Scottish Coastal Rowing Committee have taken the view that it should be every three years. Um, we're open to suggestions beyond that, but uh, it's such a big thing and it draws so much effort uh, and we want to keep it special. So we think perhaps every three years there will be other special events next year, um, uh, some non-competitive events and uh, there will be some other great things for people to watch out for. Just for the record, the team from Uckleti Bui, Coyach, came first, followed by North Berwick, Alapool and Roporty from Portobello. But at the end of the day, the scores were secondary. It was a wonderful event.